This is the place where the people of God will be edified and the name of God will be glorified. This morning, let me direct your attention to Ephesians chapter 4, beginning at verse number 11. And if you will, please stand with me for the reading of the word of Almighty God. Ephesians chapter 4, beginning at verse number 11. I'm going to read verses 11 through 13 solo and ask you to join in with me with the reading of verse number 14. We'll conclude with verse 14. The Bible says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors mm -hmm. and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. Verse 14 with me, please. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Amen. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to those who are the readers, but certainly those who are the heeders of his holy and divine will. Amen, sir. This morning we want to talk to you from the subject that the church of Christ is not a daycare. Right. <laughs> Y'all got Tim. time for this? Talk to him, Tim. The church of Christ is not a daycare. Within this particular lesson this morning, we're going to notice a twofold purpose. First of all, I want to show you that in describing the Church of Christ as not being a daycare, I want to help you understand that we're not in the business of housing babies. There are many in the religious world who have adapted themselves to a false doctrine and they believe that when man is born, he's born totally depraved and because of that, he has to be cleansed at birth. But I'm going to show you that this particular doctrine is foreign to the scriptures because when babies get here, they are pure, innocent, and sinless. Second, I want to show you that once an individual becomes a child of God, mm -hmm. God does not want them to remain spiritual infants. Right. Are you with me here? Right but God wants them to grow and to mature in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So this morning we have a twofold purpose of showing that the church of Christ is not a daycare. We, we're not in the business of collecting or housing physical babies, but we are also not in the business of keeping house with spiritual babies. Right. Let me deal with the physical babies first. Let's understand and, and listen to what the Bible says concerning an individual being born totally depraved. First of all, I need you to understand that this particular false doctrine arrived 
out of a doctrine called Calvinism. John Calvin decided because he was perturbed with what was occurring with the Roman Catholic Church and all of the hypocrisy found therein that he came up with his own methodology by which he figured that God was saving man as a result of Calvin's research and teaching he came up with the five points of Calvinism as a doctrine in which he taught everywhere he went. Mm -hmm. One of those points taught that man is born totally depraved. What we mean by the fact that man is totally depraved is literally the idea that man is born a sinner. In other words, this doctrine teaches that at birth a baby's guilt of sin is already on them. And if they're going to be right with God, they have to be baptized or christened as a baby or a young child. Otherwise, if they die as a child according to this doctrine, they'll be doomed to eternity in hell. This is what some believe. They believe that because babies are born impure, that they have to be baptized or christened to remove the guilt and the stain of sin. But the Bible teaches us no such doctrine. Nowhere in the Word of God is it taught that an individual has the responsibility to baptize a baby or young children because these children don't need to be saved because they are already safe. If you look with me at 2 Samuel chapter 12 and beginning at verse number 22, you'll see the account after David had committed that sin with Bathsheba. It was a baby that was born out of that particular union there and the baby had become sick because one of the penalties that God said that David had to suffer as a result of what he did was that that baby was going to die. When the baby got sick, David was sick too. Unrobed himself and stayed on his knees praying and asking God to heal the child. But when the child died, David had another response that his servants weren't ready for. Beginning at verse number 22, the Bible says, And he said, While the child was alive, this David talking now, he said, I fasted and wept. For I said, who can tell whether God will be gracious to me that the child may live? But now he is dead. Wherefore should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. Yes. Even here David had the understanding that his baby was safe. David said, I'll one day go to him. And David wasn't talking about going to hell. No. David was talking about going to that place that's in the bosom of the Father. David said, I shall go to him. He's in a safe place now. That baby was all right with God and there was nothing, even though that baby was born out of a sinful situation, there was no sin in that baby. Right. And so this idea that babies are born totally depraved. This idea that babies are born with sin on them is totally and completely false. In order to be saved, my brothers and sisters, an individual must first realize and understand that they are in a lost state. And the only way to be in a lost state is that someone has to sin and be separated from God. Yes. In Isaiah chapter 59 and beginning at verse number 1, Isaiah said that the Lord will go to the Lord's hand. It's not shortened that it cannot save. Neither is the Lord's ear heavy that it cannot hear. He said, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Isaiah says in verse number 3, for your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. 
Your tongue hath muttered perverseness. Even here, Isaiah shows us that the only thing that causes a man to not be right with God is sin. And a baby can't sin in the womb.